Hi everyone, and welcome to the Tesla Economist. I wanted to discuss the energy density of the 4680 sales. Now, admittedly, a lot of us were surprised when we first heard that the Texas Model Y only had a range of about 280 miles, especially after our expectations from battery day. So much so that a lot of the community actually thought that, no, this couldn't be 4680 sales, and some even thought that they must be using LFP, myself excluded. As you recall, I ran down all the figures to explain how it was not mathematically possible to be LFP, and even made a bet with one of you to plant 100 trees if I was wrong. Whomever that was, I hope you planted those trees. And we moved on and eventually discovered that yes, indeed, these Texas Model Ys really were using 4680 cells, although they were the cells from the Cato Road facility, not the Texas 4680 lines. But I was also admittedly surprised that these vehicles only had a range of 280 miles. We'd also had a lot more information now, such as the quantity of sales confirmed. Prior to this, other credible people in the industry were speculating that it must be fewer sales. These numbers are simply not adding up. Like I said though, we've had enough numbers that we can use to give us more numbers, such as the total volume of sales in the vehicle. Now the 2170 battery has about 107 liters of cell, and the 4680 has 110 liters. This does however include casing, and although the casing is thicker on the 4680, there's less casing relative to volume and surface area ratio, due to the cells being much larger. Now although the volume of the batteries are quite similar, that doesn't necessarily mean that the actual volume of jelly roll inside the battery is the same. At a guess, Tesla's 4680 machines are able to wind up the jelly roll much more efficiently, and thus insort more jelly roll per relative to cell volume. However, the thickness of the jelly roll is arbitrary, However, saying that, we also had Munro and Associates unravel the jelly roll from the 4680 cell, and it came to 325 centimeters, whereas the 2170 jelly roll is closer to 81 centimeters long, which would mean that the jelly roll is four times longer in the 4680 cell. The area of the base of the cell with a diameter of 21 millimeters compared to 46 millimeters is 1,384 millimeters squared compared to 7,234 millimeters squared. So despite the 4680 cell having a diameter larger than 5.2 times as much area for jelly roll, it only has four times as much in length. Of course, the jelly roll is also 10 millimeters more in height for the 4680. So it ends up being 2,600 centimeters squared in area compared to the 2170 with 567 centimeters squared in area. In other words, 4.6 times more jelly roll in area but 5.5 times more volume in the cell to fit more jelly roll in. Like I said, this isn't going to give us too much information as the thickness of the cathode and the anode can differ too. However, Limiting Factors YouTube channel thinks that the cathode is about 20 to 25% thicker, which would take it to about 5.5 times as much volume. We can validate this again by using the cell weight too. We know the weight of a 2170 cell is 68 grams and a 4680 is 355 grams, which is 5.2 times as much. I'm not sure how much of the cell casing is that weight, but the 2170 has pretty much twice as much surface area or casing area relative to the volume than the 4680, which was another genius aspect of the larger cell. This then makes the cell weight of the 2170 2% more than the 4680. Therefore, I would say that when you factor in the cell casing savings with the 4680, the actual amount of jelly roll would be about the same as a long range Model Y with 2170 cells. Okay, that was a really long way to say that there's pretty much the same amount of jelly roll in the 4680 battery as there is in the 2170 battery. Yet we still have this huge discrepancy of about 50 miles of range. And this is with a car that is perhaps 200 pounds or so lighter. So we know there is about as much jelly roll in the 2170 battery as there is in the 4680 battery. Remember though, the 4680 battery is also smaller in size, meaning it is less limiting when it comes to the overall design of the vehicle. It also means the battery weight is more in the center of the vehicle and thus improving the polar moment of inertia, i.e. the car corners and handles better, which Elon actually says will even be noticeable. As for the discrepancy in range, it really is just too much. Although again, Jordan from the limiting factor did have a teardown of the battery done, and we did notice that despite the anode was used in the dry battery electrode process, it did not contain any silicon. Silicon is where we can see the biggest opportunity in increasing energy density of a cell. The fact the 4680 doesn't currently contain any 
could be the reason the range of the 4680 isn't as high as the 2170 yet, as there must be almost 5% silicon in the anode of the 2170. It may be that the dry battery electrode process is just too difficult to add silicon yet, but don't go by my word on that. I'm out of my depth on theories like that. But bear in mind also, this was an old cell that was torn down and it was from the Cato Road facility, not Texas. In other words, we don't know as to what stage the anode is now. But this has all led me to a new theory in regards to energy density of the 4680. Even with no silicon in the 4680 anode, I still think the Model Y should be getting more than 280 miles of range. And we're hearing that energy density of this 4680 is rumored to be around 250 kilowatt hours, which is very close to the 2170 cell, except without silicon, which would be amazing. And perhaps the dry battery electrode process is actually improving energy density that much, along with the thicker electrodes. Now, it's fairly obvious to us all that in order for a Cybertruck to reach that 500 miles claimed, yes, 500 miles for the tri-motor, that's what they said, then we need a lot more energy in the battery to reach that. The previous theory was that Tesla would be using different cathodes, nickel ones for more energy density, the more manganese for less energy density, but the difference is not that noticeable. I believe now that Tesla might use different levels of silicon in the anode instead. You see, although silicon is fairly abundant and not that costly relative to the extra range it gets, it does have a major disadvantage. And if someone can sort this disadvantage out, then it's potentially worth trillions. Of course, Tesla are already working on mitigating it as much as possible. The disadvantage is degradation. The more silicon in a cell, the faster it will degrade. And now we're seeing 46 eddy cells that contain no silicon. Then perhaps this might be the different versions offered. Perhaps for robotaxis, they'll contain no silicon. Therefore, they won't degrade and will likely be capable of hitting a million miles before too much degradation, even with nickel-based cells. Then for Cybertruck, a consumer product, the one that needs 500 miles of range, it may have to work up to 15% silicon, or perhaps even more to get an even higher rate, and then various levels of silicon in between for different cells for different applications. They could produce different variants on the different lines even. If Tesla are not going to make a 4680 LFP cell, then this might be the cell required for that robotaxi a nickel cobalt manganese cathode, NCM cathode, with a silicon-free anode, perhaps still capable of 300 miles a day, depending on the size of the robotaxi, which should be sufficient for a day's taxiing. Also, it was pointed out that the current 4680 battery does contain padding. This battery looks like it is expandable, likely enough room for another array of 4680 cells, probably 69 of them. I also spoke to a structural engineering friend of mine, and he said the structure would probably still be okay, if an array of cells was also removed. Therefore, it's possible Tesla could have batteries with 138 more cells than others and a lot more silicon. Of course, although 500 miles of range was mentioned, we aren't entirely sure if that will be for the first quad or tri-motor versions and may take several years to reach that level still. My point is that Tesla are able to offer quite a wide variety of energy capacity with their 4680 battery packs to serve different applications and also vary battery degradation too where necessary. Remember, this is the A architecture. It's meant to be highly versatile. Then again, perhaps degradation isn't that big a factor if the cells can be recycled at a relatively low cost, especially when compared to the application potential they can offer. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.